talk about uh, uh, last week we touched the subject of uh, something called uh, the 37 practice of 37 practices of the um, 37 aspects of the bodhi uh, 37 bodhi aspects uh, sometimes <clears throat> sometimes translated as bodhisattva uh, practices actually this is not a bodhis this is not an exclusively bodhisattva practice so it's bodhi but not bodhisattva bodhisattva practices or exclusively bodhisattva practices usually means it's a mahayana practice but this is a practice that is common to both mahayana and theravada system uh, so it's actually um, 37 aspects of the bodhi bodhi meaning buddhahood or enlightenment uh, bodhi is a um, is a combination of two words uh, one uh, meaning culmination, culmination or completion, and the other meaning uh, enlightenment as well. So, uh, so this refers to bodhi refers to the Buddhahood in a way, in a sense. Um, okay. So, uh, of the thirty-seven practices of the bod thirty-seven uh, bodhi aspects, uh, we are we have covered last week. We covered what is known as the um, uh, uh, four close uh, placements of the mind or for mindfulness if you like and the <clears throat> which were uh, mindfulness of the body uh, the feelings the mind and the phenomena or the dharma as uh, mm, the mindfulness or contemplation contemplation of uh, mm, body the contemplation of uh, the actual wordings used were uh, close placement, uh, the close placement of the mind. So there are four of them. The, uh, to to understand simply, to simplify, we can call it mindfulness practice. So four mindfulness practices: uh, mindfulness of the body, the the body, the feelings, the mind, and the dharma. Or the phenomena as I told you before Dharma has a lot of uh, is highly ambiguous word so uh, here Dharma refers to all the phenomena mm. um, so we have covered uh, thus so far and we will continue uh, from the rest of the 37 Bodhi aspects today now uh, the f following the four uh, close placements or the four mindfulness uh, as we as is, it is popularly known um, comes what is known as the four perfect abandonments or four proper abandonments uh, so um, uh, this follows the uh, previous uh, practice which is the um, the four close placements of which uh, the last one is the placement of the mind uh, sorry uh, placement of the four uh, proper uh, close placement of dharma hmm. meaning a mindfulness of the dharma um, so first of all we need to get hold of uh, we have no idea what our mind is and how our mind reacts and how our mind acts and so on and so forth so we need something tangible something that we can touch and feel and you know um, something more tangible so we use the body then gradually we change to something mental uh, well in um, uh, something more internal uh, which is the feeling but not necessarily mental uh, then we went to mind which is the mental uh, much more subtler and much more subtle and much uh, more um, um, inconspicuous and uh, then we went to well, once we are able to um, observe our mind we are, once we are able to be mindful of our mind then we uh, we are able to control our own mind we are able to take care of um, take good hold of our own mind then we uh, shift that to all the other phenomena other other beings other animate beings and inanimate beings all certain beings all objects out there uh, so once we uh, uh, after we have perfected ourselves so to speak uh, we shine the light um, outwards 
And uh, when we do that, we see all the phenomena out there. And then we also get an idea of what is to be taken and what is not to be taken. In other words, uh, the virtuous and the non-virtuous deeds. Um, so to simplify, the non-virtuous deeds are, are to be abandoned completely and the virtuous deeds has to be uh, taken in completely. And uh, this is also uh, the, uh, the four abandonments actually align with the Four Noble Truths. Uh, the Four Noble Truths of which uh, the, the first two are to be abandoned and the later two are to be obtained. First two being the suffering and the causes or the source of suffering which are to be abandoned completely and then the later two which is uh, Nirvana and uh, the uh, path leading towards Nirvana which are both to be obtained. Uh, so, um, similarly, um, the four uh, perfect abandonments, abandonments of uh, non-virtuous deeds that has um, um, abandonment, abandonment of the non-virtuous deeds, the first two relates to the abandonments of the non-virtuous deeds, the later two <clears throat> deals with the um, procuring as well as uh, cultivating uh, virtuous deeds. So what we do is uh, the negative deeds and the, uh, the non-virtuous deeds which we, we have obtained in the past, we avoid them, we abandon them, and uh, the negative deeds and the non-virtuous deeds that we have not uh, yet abandoned, uh, not yet cultivated or not, not yet obtained, we try to avoid them uh, for future. So what we have, um, what amount of negative deeds we have gathered so far, we abandoned them, the first, uh, the first one. Uh, the second one is whatever negative deeds that we have not yet obtained, we try to, we try to avoid them. And the, the same goes uh, with the virtuous deeds, but in the opposite direction, which is to um, whatever positive deeds that we have obtained, we try to um, uh, uh, we, we, we try to extend them, we try to cultivate them and ex, ex, uh, extend them, expand them and uh, uh, whatever positive deeds, positive actions that we have not yet um, obtained, uh, we try to obtain them, we try to gather them. So these four, the, uh, these, so, so the, the, uh, this step is called uh, the four perfect abandonments. So, in so the, as I said before, these four uh, um, perfect ab 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 abandonments uh, align with the four noble truths. The first two are to be opt uh, 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 the first two of the perfect uh, the perfect abandonment are to be abandoned or and avoided, and the later two are to be uh, cultivated and to be obtained. <clears throat> uh, so after following the four perfect ab abandonments, uh, one will be able to. Uh, so the four the four uh, perfect alignments actually deals with what to do and to, to to put it simply, it deals with what to do and what not to do. So once you are aware of what to do and what's not what not to do, um, then you are more. Um, uh, you are. Your your ability to um, your your ability to uh, shine inward, your ability to um, your your ability to uh, let's say focus inwardly increases uh, because you have <clears throat> uh, with your practice of uh, abandoning with your pra with your practice of uh, aligning perfectly with the for abandonments. Um, so when you do the things you should be doing, and when you do, to put it simply, when you do the things that you should be doing and not do the things you should not be doing, of course you gain more uh, stability and peace of mind. And because of that, your mental prowess increases. And because of that, your ability to um, focus, your ability to concentrate, your ability to, uh, your, your, your meditational, uh, faculties uh, also uh, grows. Uh, so by do, um, 
so 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 thus comes the second part, uh, third part, which is the um, the four uh, magical legs. So this is a um, so it, so literal translation of the these practices called uh, four magical legs. Uh, so um, the reason it's called okay. So we will go to the reason later. Uh, so the four magical le uh, four magical uh, for magical legs, mm. the four magical legs are the legs of the. Let's just call them legs. The legs of uh, the legs of aspiration, the legs of uh, contemplation, the legs mm. of uh, uh, diligence, and uh, the legs of uh, analysis. Mm. So. Uh, Aspiration or a wish, aspiration, um, the legs of aspiration, the legs of diligence, the legs of uh, diligence, the legs of um, uh, analysis. So these are known as the four legs of uh, the four the four magical legs or the four legs of magical pro, uh, magical power if you like so the reason it is called the magical leg is very simple <clears throat> once you have perfected these four legs uh, these four legs actually they are not really legs actually <laughs> they are actually mental uh, faculties but the reason it they are called legs is they have a similar bearing to a leg in the sense that uh, the leg is like the pillar of the body uh, the leg, the legs carry our body. All uh, wherever we go, our legs carry us. Our feet carry us. So similarly, the four um, magical legs are the basis of uh, a magical power. Mm. So you know we have seen many stories of how people who have uh, gained realization and siddhis, they can let's say they walk in the water or walk on fire or you know um, the uh, whether we have seen it or not, we have heard a lot of stories of people who have made high realization, being able to um, portray uh, a certain amount of uh, different amount of uh, magical feats, magic magical feats. And uh, in order to do that, in order to bend the law of, let's say, the law of the, 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 the law of physics and the, the ability to uh, reach a place where um, it is uh, uh, scientifically um, impossible, um, as we understand. But we, you know, someone just thinks of going to America, and all of a, in, in the very instant they reach, they show up in America. So, like, to being able to apparat, being able to disappear, uh, being able to you know fly uh, without wings, and so on and so forth. So these kind of magical feats. Um, in, order, in, uh, in other words, uh, to able to bend the law, um, the, the law of gravity, in order to bend the, uh, the law of um, physics and so on and so forth, um, for for be, to, to to be able to uh, play with matter, first you need to be able to control your mind, and uh, so these mental prowess, these mental, uh, these four uh, so-called uh, the legs of magical power or magical legs are the basis of all that. So once you perfect the, once you um, train yourself and perfect the four magical um, legs, so these are I, I, I just I, I must repeat again. This is not actual, not an actual leg, but it is called a leg. Uh, it is this, it is actually a mental uh, faculty. So these four legs. Actually, <clears throat> these four magical legs acts as the foundation or the basis of all um, different sorts of uh, magical powers that you are you, you would be able to display, and that's the reason it's called the magical legs, the legs of magic. So there are four of them. Uh, the first is that of the uh, aspirational uh, leg. Uh, the second is uh, diligence. The third, uh, the, the third is concentration. Uh, the fourth is analysis. Mm, so uh, the uh, aspirational, uh, the, the aspirational legs of 
magical leg, their aspirational magical leg, uh, is something that when you think of and displaying something, when you think of uh, engaging into that magical, uh, in, in engaging into that uh, concentrative uh, state, contemplative state, you will be able to do so by merely um, wishing to do so, by merely aspiring to do so. Mm. And uh, then the second one is that of the diligence. Once you put your diligence into it, once you put your efforts into it, once you uh, not just think of doing going into meditation or con contemplative state, uh, but actually put efforts into um, once you put efforts into going into the meditative state, you will be able to do so. And then the third one is that uh, you don't have to um, you don't even have to wish for that. But by merely, so there is a difference between thinking and wishing. Uh, the f um, the first one is aspirational, which is a wish. So, oh, I wish I would, I, I, I can meditate. I, I can go into a meditative state. But uh, more than wishing for something, by merely pondering your thoughts over something, something you can do that, which is the um, the uh, the. Um, uh, we'll call it now. The miracle or the, the, the magical, uh, the the, uh, the magical leg of aspiration, the magical uh, leg of uh, uh, diligence, the magical leg of thought, and the magical le leg of analysis. So by the aspirational magical leg uh, or mirac miraculous leg, you have to aspire for it. You have to wish for it. The second one is diligence. You have to put efforts into it. Uh, the third one is you don't have to put effort into it. You just um, think of, simply ponder over the thought of uh, going into the uh, deep magic, uh, deep meditative state, and you can just go over it. And <clears throat> then uh, the magical leg or the miraculous leg of analysis, as it is called, the fourth one. Uh, so the, uh, the analysis is actually an, uh, is a reference to something called uh, special insight. So special insight, uh, this is also known as um, uh, tamata. Tamata uh, the, in the in the Sanskrit, uh, it, uh, you know, you, usually we talk about the in the in the in the meditative in the meditation circle. Uh, there's a talk about shamata and the vipassana. So. Um, the special insight is vipassana. Vipassana, meaning this is actually uh, shamatha is gaining mental stability, and once you gain mental stability, uh, then you point that towards an object of uh, object of object of meditation, and uh, when you pinpoint that your mental prowess, your your, your, your all your, all of your mental uh, faculties towards. Uh, focal object, then you will be able to uh, sear, S E A R, sear right through all the, uh, uh, sear through uh, all the illusions, all the all the illusions, all the wheels, all the um, uh, curtains, and you will be able to see the truth as it is, it is the, the, the naked truth of whatever, or naked reality, naked truth of whatever the phenomena is, uh, without any. Um, cover up. So the uh, special insight um, is also uh, the, the 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 term analysis here. The, the miraculous leg of analysis. The analysis is actually a reference to special insight. So um, the miraculous leg that is actually uh, let's say powered by somewhat produced by the special insight is called the uh, miraculous leg of mm, miraculous leg of analysis and that um, of the four legs of, of the four magical legs or the four uh, legs of magical po uh, miraculous power four miraculous legs the fourth one the miraculous leg of uh, analysis is what we use 
uh, to gain to to gain insight into the reality of all phenomena. So, <clears throat> with, as I said before, they are called the legs of miracle miracles and magic magical magic because they, um, they act as the support system or the basis of all magical progress that you can display externally. Uh, but uh, they are, you know, uh, mm, they, they are not so astonishing as the fourth one. Uh, yeah, if, you can, if, if you are able to fly, if you are able to, if you are able to fly, if you are able to display uh, fire and this kind of thing, of course it's such a miraculous thing, but uh, that will not get you out of samsara mm, at, a, at the end of the day. So um, nowadays people can fly without wings, uh, e even if you do not do meditation, you can still fly without wings, you can get into an aeroplane and you can still fly. So <clears throat> the point is, uh, all the, uh, um, uh, most of the magical powers that we can uh, uh, learn and uh, display will not uh, free us from samsara, but the fourth one, the magical leg, or the miraculous leg of uh, insight or magical lack of analysis will help us to see um, uh, the reality of all phenomena on a first-hand basis and that will actually free us from samsara. Okay, uh, following this is what is known as the five, uh, five powers or four or five faculties. So um, there, there is something called five powers and five forces uh, within the 37 uh, aspects of the body. Um, the power and force uh, in the Tibetan word used was Wangbo and Top. Wangbo means uh, direct translation of Wangbo would be something similar to power, uh, uh, force, and uh, Top. Wangbo would be power and the force, uh, Top will be force. So there are five Power and five forces, actually they are both quite the same thing. Uh, the reason one is known as power and the other is known as force is, uh, um, so one develops power first and then uh, uh, later develops the forces. So the difference between the power and the force is that uh, with, the, um, with the power, one, the, 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 the discordant entities or uh, all, all of the let's call it the, the negative <clears throat> instances, the negative uh, the uh, hindrances will not, uh, the ne negative instances will not be able to hinder you. Uh, so, but what the power does is the negative forces will not ab not be able to hinder you, not be able to um, interrupt you. Uh, what the uh, force does is it will be able to uh, annihilate. It will be able to um, vanquish all the negative forces. So the power is something that stop. That is more like a, a shield. It, 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 it covers you. It helps you. It, it, um, it's like a um, it's like a security system. It's like a bodyguard. So the power actually protects you from all the negative forces. Uh, the force actually vanquishes, that destroys all the negative forces. So the power and force are um, the um, similar. Has one has the ability to protect, and the other has the ability to sort of uh, destroy uh, the negative forces, uh, protect you from the negative forces, and uh, um, destroy the negative forces from which all the uh, negative instances are uh, coming from. So these are known as the uh, five powers and the five forces. So they are uh, the power of uh, um, diligence, uh, power of mindfulness, power of uh, concentration or meditation, uh, concentrative, concentrative power, and then the power of uh, wisdom. So uh, diligence, mindfulness, concentration, contemplation, and uh, Actually, not contem uh, contemplation. Actually, this is uh, actually single-pointed con con contemplation. Single-pointed con contemplation. Religions, mindfulness, single-pointed contemplation, and uh, wisdom. So, um, sorry, the faith. First is the faith. The faith, 
the power of faith, the power of diligence, the power of mindfulness, uh, the power of uh, single-pointed contemplation, and the power of wisdom. So they're called power as long as they are protecting you from the negative influences, and they are called forces when they actually uh, go on to destroy or vanquish uh, the negative forces. So it's like a um, you know the offense and offense and defense sort of mechanism. So the offense mechanism is called the forces and the defense mechanism is called uh, power. Mm. So they have a little bit of a, the, 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 uh, the mechanism are a little bit different, but they actually are same faculties. So they are same faculties when they uh, are utilized for, in the offense, they are called forces, when they are utilized for defenses, they are called uh, power. Uh, after that comes the uh, seven aspects of the bodhi. So here it's also translated as bodhisattva. It's not bodhisattva uh, because it's um, it's bodhi, not bodhisattva. Because bodhisattva makes it uh, look uh, exclusive to the Mahayana practice because this is a common practice. So it's not a bodhisattva. Uh, so the seven secondary virtues of the bodhisattva it's translated. So this is wrong. It's called bodhi, not bodhisattva. Um, the, the seven secondary virtues or the seven uh, branches of the body, this is called. Mm, so they are known as the, mm, so we covered the five, five powers and the five forces and after that comes the seven uh, branches of the body or the seven secondary virtues of the body, body meaning Buddhahood. Yeah? Um, so that is the uh, perfect mindfulness. Mm. Uh, so they all has the uh, pre pre prefix perfect with it. So the um, perfect mindfulness, perfect wisdom, perfect effort or perfect diligence. Actually, diligence is a much better translation, I think. Perfect diligence, uh, perfect joy and uh, perfect suppleness or sometimes it's called pliancy, P-L-I-N. P L I A N C Y, pliancy. So you can call it suppleness, but um, <clears throat> the proper translation would be pliancy. So this this deals with being able to um, comply uh, with uh, whatever meditative uh, uh, mental state or meditative posture that you are in. So being able to uh, comply with that. Uh, so pliancy or suppleness of the body and then the perfect concentration of the body or single-pointed con con contemplation of the body and then the perfect equanimity um, of the body. Um, so these are known as the seven bodhis, uh, the seven uh, branches of the bodhis. So after perfecting the five powers and the five forces, one is able to uh, delve into the perfect uh, mindfulness, perfect wisdom, perfect diligence, perfect joy, and so on and so forth of the bodhi. So there, the reason this is called the, uh, um, the, uh, the translation here says secondary virtues, but actually the, the Tibetan word is changzhu la, so which means the branches of the bodhi. <clears throat> so if you have the body tree and then the body, uh, the, the, the branch, you have the body tree and the branches are part of the body. Uh, so similar, so what it, what it, what it actually um, uh, says about uh, the, what it, what it actually means is that uh, by practicing these, uh, the, the seven uh, branches of the body <clears throat> are part of the um, body. So body, you have to understand as yes, the Buddhahood here. Uh, bodhi means uh, culmination and enlightenment. Okay, so bodhi has two connotation. Uh, I mean, has two words in there, bo and di. So it actually applies to. Um, it, it refers to culmination, which means com com completion, right? And enlightenment. Completion of all the stages and enlightenment in the sense that it is enlightened. It is uh, full of uh, luminosity. Is able to see everything. Uh, is because there is no longer any hindrances, no longer any wheels that covers up. So uh, that is bodhi. So the seven, um, by practicing the seven 
the the seven branches of the bodhi are just like a branch is part of the tree the seven seven branches of the bodhi are part of the buddhahood the bodhi uh, in the sense that by practicing by 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 practicing these you will be able to uh, replicate the actual uh, feats of the buddha uh, you will be able to you are you, even though you are not a buddha yet by uh, practicing the seven uh, branches of the Buddha, you are actually replicating the actions or the feats of the Buddha. Uh, so therefore, that is, it is called the seven branches of the Bodhi, not Bodhisattva, Bodhi. This is not an exclusive Mahayana practice. It's a common practice, so that's why it's called 37, uh, the seven practices, seven branches of the Bodhi. Seven branches of the Bodhi. Okay, so this actually, <clears throat> okay, then we have the Eight Noble Paths, uh, Eight Noble Paths, which is again, um, so the the seven branches of the Bodhi and uh, some of the other practices which uh, have not been popularized, uh, but it is actually a common practice. But as you know, uh, the four noble, uh, the, the four mindfulness practices and the Eight Noble Paths are very popular all over the world. And uh, so last of the 37 aspects of the body, we have the eight noble paths, which is the right view, right thought, right speech, right effort, livelihood, mindfulness, concentration, and action. Uh, uh, so right view is, uh, uh, um, right view is right mentality. So having the right mentality. Mm, then right thought is having uh, right, mod, uh, thoughts that are uh, fueled by right motivation and right speech is something uh, a speech that is actually fueled by so uh, when you have the right view or the right mentality if you if if you uh, keep the right mentality if you uphold the right mentality which is right view then uh, it will help you to um, uh, cultivate right thoughts and with right thoughts we will be a thought is uh, um, in, it's, 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 an, it's an effort, it's a mentality that has been fueled by effort. Uh, you contemplate. When you are thinking of something, you are contemplating on something. Uh, so right thought actually uh, fuels right speech. Can, with right thought can come right speech. And with right speech, when you say something right, you actually... Uh, follow it up with uh, the right action because if you if what you say and what you do do not match up then it is not going to be okay uh, because you know many many most many many times most of the time in the world what happen, the problem is we say something and we do something else we do something else and we say something we say something in the right and we do something in the left and that's where the problem comes but if you upkeep the right speech uh, which is actually fueled by right thought and right view or right mentality, then of course you will be able to keep up with right uh, actions. And uh, so in order to keep right action, you have to put right effort or right diligence, proper diligence. Let's call all of them proper. So you have to put proper effort or proper uh, diligence. And uh, with proper diligence uh, comes with proper diligence and with proper action, in order to have a proper action, one needs to have a proper livelihood. If your livelihood is going as astray, if your livelihood is going wayward, on the, if your <clears throat> livelihood, if your the way you live your life is going to the wrong direction, then it will be very difficult for you to keep with the right action. So it's important to have a right livelihood. And once you have right livelihood, then it is it will be much easier for you to keep a right or proper mindfulness and with proper mindfulness when you are mindful uh, of all your actions and all your thoughts of course it will be much much easier for you to keep uh, proper concentration or right concentration and with that of course come right action this completes the 37 aspects of the body okay so uh, so I stop here for today's teaching because uh, it's quite quite technical
lots of technicals, uh, technicalities here. So if you have questions, you can put it up, uh, or we can okay, discuss so something no. else. We do not have any questions today, Rupichela. Repeat that, please. We don't have any questions today, Rupichela. Oh, this okay. emptiness. It's today so <laughs> empty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, no questions. That's good. Uh, we used to say in the class uh, when we go to when we when we were in class when we were uh, the students in the monastery monastery we say um, um, when you have no questions when you have no doubt it it can either be very good or very bad very good very good because you have learned everything and you, and you have no um, doubt at all. Very bad because you're not paying attention. <laughs> so, it, it, so our teachers always encourage us to be um, doubtful, uh, be in, be be in, in curious, in curious. Uh, um, yeah, always encourage us to be curious. <clears throat> so they say uh, if you have no doubt or no questions at all, it means. Either you have become the Buddha, enlightened, and have no questions at all, or you haven't paid attention. <laughs> just pulling your legs. I'm just joking. Uh, <clears throat> today's uh, the 37 aspects of the body. Uh, it's it's quite technical. It's quite technical, and uh, so yeah, it's a uh, it's okay if you have no questions. Um, let's just finish the uh, the first point of the, uh, the you know the okay it's too technical I think maybe leave it for next week so anything to discuss or if you don't have anything to discuss we can have a um, <clears throat> earlier um, okay, earlier conclusion we can stop here today. Okay, no, then. <laughs> so even though the 37 aspects of the body is uh, a common practice, as I, as I said before, it is uh, only the first and the last one has been popularized all over the world. The four mindfulness practice, which is very popular, and the eight, uh, um, eight no noble eightfold path uh, is also very popular all over the world because this is more practical. It's uh, more related to our day-to-day -day life. And so we can use them, utilize them in our day-to-day -day life, and we can derive benefit from it. Uh, but the others, like the uh, miraculous leg, the magical legs, and so on and so on and so forth, are a bit technical. And also, if you are going to live a life, if you are, uh, you know, most of us are struggling in our day-to-day uh, -day, um, life, uh, our samsaric life, and for that, uh, to, 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 to have a better samsaric life, most of the other practices does not help that much, but uh, the first uh, and the last one, the Noble Eightfold Path and the uh, four uh, mindfulness practices, they do help us with uh, uh, leading a samsaric life as well. <clears throat> so therefore, that is why it's very popular here. Yeah. Then we can go to right contemplation now. <laughs> At meditation. I have one question. Yes. I, um, question? I, have a, I have one question, Ruchita. I was just curious when you said that um, some people can actually bend uh, or can teleport, but yeah. that doesn't help them to gain enlightenment or. Yeah. To become a Get Buddha. Out of mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, so does it require some uh, in order to uh, get out of samsara? Does it require it to have that ability or not? It's a byproduct. It's a it's it, it's a byproduct. It's uh, it's not a requirement. It just comes it's like a buy one get two. You know, buy buy two get one thing. <laughs> Thank you, Ruchi. So. <laughs> Thank you.
you travel by air to like you know if you travel by air on a like eight hour three eight hour eight, eight ten hour journey they will give you refreshments and food and everything which which is like a byproduct you didn't ask for that but uh, it comes you actually ask for a plane ticket from a to a to from point a to point b but with that comes the seed the you know the food and everything so similarly uh, when when you are working on the uh, eight the uh the the four um the four miraculous legs uh, of course your goal uh <clears throat> as a, as a as a buddhist dharma practitioner your goal is to escape from samsara when you uh train into those things uh the ability to bend uh, the laws lo laws of laws of motion and laws of gravity and so on and so forth, they come as a byproduct. It is not something that you are aspiring for, but it comes as a byproduct. It comes as a byproduct in the sense that uh, it helps you to help others. So um, being able to light a fire and this kind of thing, of course, this will not get you out of samsara. You can light up a fire with a matchstick and lighter and so on and so forth. But just in case, you know, there's a life to be saved and there's no other, none of the objects out there, since you have that ability, you can use your you can use the ability to light a fire or transport to another place and so on and so forth, to like Superman or whatever, and you can just you know transport tra transport to the place where somebody needs help and then help people uh, wherever the, it is needed. Um, so it, it's like a byproduct thing. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Mm? Okay. We have one question now, Rumichela. Okay. Um, Rumichela, knowing about the abandonments, but hard to do. Any suggestions? Help, Rumichela. Thank you. Um, uh, translate. Rumichela, um, biết được um, bốn cái um, hạnh xã nhưng mà làm được thì rất là khó. Um, thầy có uh, xin thầy chỉ đạo cho bài uh, cách ạ. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, mm, very good question, very practical question. So start small and uh, start with attainable goals. So let's say uh, um, you're not able to give up something, you're not able to, you know, abandonments. The four, of the four abandonments, there are two to uh, actually abandon and two to actually obtain. Uh, so let's say uh, go on the, let's go on the positive side uh, of doing prostration. So if you are not able to do prostration, start with doing uh, let's say one prostration a week, or maybe three prostrations a week, and gradually uh, do every alternate days, and then you can uh, move up to uh, three prostrations a day, so on and so forth. So reciting a mantra is also similar. You know, you're reciting mantra is not for me. I don't believe in this. You know, I don't. And uh, I don't think to reciting a mantra will help people. You know, if you have doubt, just do one mantra like once a month. If you do, you, you don't have to believe in it. You just do it once then see how it fares. Uh, you know, so gradually start with something, uh, start with something more attainable, something small, something attainable. So when you do something attainable, something small, uh, you will be able to do it. And once you are able to perform, once you're able to complete your goal, there is a, uh, you'll be able to derive a certain uh, joy, joyfulness from completing a goal, um, completing a small goal, a certain goal. And with that, that goal actually, uh, sorry, that uh, joyfulness will actually incite excitement within you to do more. And then gradually you will be able to um, 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 be able to uh, boost your practices, uh, uh, whether it's in the form of abandoning negativities or in obtaining uh, um, positive action, able to boost yourself, you will be able to lift yourself up. Um, like, um, yes, please go on. Yes, I think maybe it's easier for me to ask than to type. Is it okay? Right, right, right. Much better that way, please. Um, in the chanting, there are 
five things in the like Ming Mei stairway. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there are five uh, lines, but I yeah. see only four. I, I see. was wondering why. Right, Could right, right. Explain that. Absolutely. You. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You want to translate that in Vietnamese? Um, <laughs> maybe Ian can help. <laughs> I'm oh, okay. All right. Vietnamese. Okay. Miss Huang can do that actually. Yeah. Okay. Then I will just explain it, and then Miss Huang will uh, translate it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the thing is, uh, the Ming Metzewe, which is like a, uh, a very common practice, very common, very, uh, like a core practice in the. Uh, it's a practice uh, dedicated to Lama Tsongkhapa. Uh, and uh, this practice can vary from four lines to ten lines. And uh, you're right because uh, you're right to say that you saw with the five lines, because uh, actually this uh, there's a thing called the three lords, three lords, <clears throat> the lords of wisdom, Manjushri, the lords of compassion, generous secret, Avalokiteshvara, and the lords of uh, power or lords of secret, which is the um, uh, Vajrapani. And uh, so Lama Tsongkhapa is regarded as the emanation of the three lords, the lord of uh, Manjushri, Avalokiteshvara, and uh, uh, Vajrapani in the human form. Uh, so because of that, uh, we usually uh, re chant, recite this, um, this chanting, this uh, verse, Mixama, uh, to uh, dedicate it to him, dedicate to, uh, towards him, re recalling his many qualities and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Uh, so in order to do that, Ming Mitzvah uh, did in Jerezik. First is Jerezik, Chimeki Mwangbu Jambeya, which is Manjushri. Then the third line, we have Dibu Mwangbu Jomze Samenda, which is the uh, Vajrapani. And then Kanje Kebe Tsugyen Tsongkapa, which is uh, Lama Tsongkapa himself. Which means salutations to Lama Tsongkapa. Um, but normally in the Tibetan, sort of like the grammatical, um, the, the, uh, the gr grammatical structure, in the Tibetan, um, and so the structure of the Tibetan uh, stanzas, you know, verses, usually it goes with four lines, four, 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 four lines. And to sit it better, uh, uh, to, to fit it into the uh, normal four line prayers, uh, Vajrapani uh, is taken out and we recite with only four lines. So, and another thing we put it like this is because. Uh, uh, the when we do the Mimet uh, chanting, that chanting, right? So when we do the five line ones, uh, we have to do a certain number of time to fit it properly. Because when you don't do it properly, uh, when you do not recite it a certain number of times, uh, the it it mismatches with the melody, so therefore, uh, in order to fit with all melodies, um, the four line is the most proper one. So it's very common in the monastery to do the four line ones. Actually, there is a five line one, which is the one you said. Then there is a, a seven line one, six line one, and then there is a eight line one, and there is a nine line and a ten line. Mimets it. This is like 10, I think it's more than 10. So this is like the longest version of Mixima. So there are many versions of Mixima and there's actually a huge volume, like a three volume of uh, co commentaries and practices and everything related to just the four lines of Mixima alone. A very good question. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's all for today. And uh, thank you very much for your attention and your uh, co questions. Uh, okay. Now let's go to the dedication, please. <clears throat> Bây giờ chúng ta dừng lại đây và chuyển sang cảm ơn đã chú ý lắng nghe và chúng ta sẽ xem phần sang phần hồi hướng. Oh.
آنجور